The U.S. is about to start losing 175,000 jobs per month, according to Bank of America. Almost every technology company has either announced layoffs or done them without announcing. It seems that no tech company has been spared, every company is tightening their belt. This is the United States teeters on the brink of recession. Inflation is raging all across the globe. The Federal Reserve is aggressively raising interest rates in order to fight inflation. The housing market is softening and even declining in some cities. We are covering this and updating you every time there is news. Because we know that this is the most popular topic on this channel. As you know from previous videos, even Google and Meta platforms are having layoffs. Except they are not calling them layoffs. But everyone knows what is happening. This video continues our coverage of the wave of layoffs sweeping the United States. What does it mean for the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into all of that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. The Federal Reserve's fight to squash inflation will cause the U.S. economy to start losing tens of thousands of jobs a month beginning early next year, Bank of America warns. Although the jobs market stayed surprisingly strong as of September. Inflation is raging in practically every country in the world. Higher interest rates will also soften demand for everything from cars and homes to appliances. The pace of job growth is expected to be roughly cut in half during the fourth quarter of this year. Bank of America said in a note to clients today. Pressure from the Federal Reserve's war on inflation is building. Wall Street analysts are now expecting payrolls will begin shrinking early in 2023. That translates to a loss of approximately 175,000 jobs each month during Q1 of 2023. Charts in the report published by Bank of America seem to suggest that job losses will continue throughout 2023. The premise is a harder landing rather than a softer one, said Michael Gapin, chief economist at Bank of America. In a perfect world, the Fed would slow the jobs market enough to get inflation back to healthy levels, Gapin continued. But not so much that it causes significant and persistent job losses, Gapin added. But I do not think the Fed will be able to pull that off, Gapin also said. We are looking for a recession to begin in the first half of next year, Gapin also noted. The Bank of America expects the unemployment rate to peak at 5.5%. The September federal jobs report showed that the jobs market is slowing down. But the United States still added 263,000 jobs in September, which is stronger than expected. The U.S. unemployment rate is now 3.5%, which is the lowest since 1969. The Bank of America report says that the unemployment rate rise to 5.5% in 2023. On the other hand, the Federal Reserve expects the unemployment rate to reach 4.4% next year. The U.S. Central Bank is aggressively raising interest rates at the quickest pace in at least four decades. Rising interest rates are expected to cool inflation. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has made clear that there is no rush to shift away from inflation fighting mode. Interest rates are the key to guide the economy from a slowdown or even a recession. They'll accept some weakness in labor markets in order to bring inflation down, Gapin said. Interest rates will need to stay at restrictive levels for a period of time, Fed officials have said. Recessions tend to have quick snapbacks, Gapin said. But the Fed's stance on keeping rates high for an extended period suggests maybe this plays out a little longer, Gapin also noted. We could see six months of weakness in the labor market, he said. Not every forecast is as bearish as the Bank of America report. The conference board reported that its employment trend index ticked to a higher level next month. This is a signal that employment will continue to grow over the coming months, said the conference board. But job gains are likely to decelerate from their recent pace, the conference board said. The good news is that even those calling for a recession do not see the unemployment rate skyrocketing as it did in 2020 or 2008, continued the conference board. We expect the unemployment rate will top out at 5.5% next year, well below the peak of nearly 15% in April 2020, said the Bank of America report. Although nobody wants to be callous about someone losing their job, Gapin said, this could be classified as a mild recession. Economists are watching closely to see what is really happening. Are layoffs just getting started? Or, are more layoffs are on the horizon? Job market experts said things are going to be rocky and uncertain over next few months for workers. They said inflation and global uncertainty are taking a toll on companies. 
Average consumers are tightening their budgets. Gas prices are up on the past week. Rents are rising in some places but falling in other places. People are not feeling as confident about the future. So, they are not spending as much. So, corporate marketers are dialing back their ad spending, especially online. And, with a lot of tech companies dependent on corporate ad spending, that adds to the uncertainty. The sands are shifting for big tech. More competition is coming in from all angles, especially from TikTok. The pandemic was a catalyst for technology companies. Lots of people had to work from home. They bought new computers and smartphones. They moved out of traditional technology hubs to Mountain West cities. Boise. Denver. Salt Lake City. Phoenix. Las Vegas. And Dallas. Now, the pandemic is mostly over. Layoffs are expected in the hangover from the pandemic. I don't think we are facing a recession, but companies seem to be positioning themselves just in case, said Wall Street technology analyst Jeff Belisario. Despite a drop in job openings, the market is still solid, Belisario added. But how solid? There are still a lot of jobs out there, added Belisario. Basically, everyone in tech companies had to work from home during the pandemic. But now, tech companies are calling employees back to the office. Some tech workers want to stay as remote workers and continue to work from home. There is a lot hanging in the balance. As everyone watching this channel knows, Google and Meta platforms reported decidedly disappointing Q2 earnings. So, big tech fundamentals are weakening. And, not just for one specific reason. Not surprisingly, both companies revised or revoked forward guidance. Meta has posted shrinking revenue for two quarters and maybe a third quarter as well. Meta has begun quietly pushing out a significant number of employees. Analysts expect these reductions to be a precursor to deeper cuts. Talk on the street is that Meta is cutting 15%. The company has been cutting its financial guidance for operating expenses for a year now. Meta has about 83,000 employees, which is 32% higher than at this time last year. Google has 174,000 employees, which is 20% higher than this time last year. But the United States is now teetering on the brink of recession and the digital ad market has plunged. Shares in Meta platforms are down by over 50% so far this year and 65% within the past 12 months. Snap has publicly announced layoffs of 20% of its employees. But, what do you think? Please leave us a comment below and hit the like button. We would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos when they are released. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.